Let's work through the outlook that we got from earnings this morning. The near-term outlook is good, forecasting earnings from the pharma and vaccines business to rise 12 to 14 percent. City came out with this in response. GSK's path to a higher multiple remains dependent on solving the post-27 growth rate as opposed to the near-term guidance. What's in the pipeline, Emma, that's going to satisfy those people? Well, first of all, Jean, thank you for having me. Absolutely delighted to be here today. Uh, off the back of uh, str announcing strong performance for 2021, an excellent quarter, and really showing momentum across the bi business as we're building into this landmark year in 2022, when, as you know, uh, we are separating into two exciting growth-oriented uh, companies and delighted to be guiding, as you said, for this year for new GSK Biopharma with a uh, five to seven uh, top line growth rate and 12 to 14 in terms of operating uh, margin growth and that excludes any contribution uh, from covid solutions it's also the first year of the five-year outlook we've given of growing up more than five and more than ten percent which is really a step change in delivery for gsk and at the heart of that is the progress in innovation when you look back at 2021 we actually grew our new and specialty products by 26 percent that's very important momentum. We look forward uh, and see in vaccines, obviously adult vaccination hit by the prioritization of COVID vaccines, but we see Shingrix, uh, a very sizable product for us, doubling uh, by 2026. And uh, I'll come back to consumer later, but across our total R&D pipeline, yeah. we have 64 assets, 20, 20, 22 of them are in pivotal stages and seven with big milestones in RSV, in rheumatoid arthritis, in oncology and in hepatitis B. So lots to come. I have to say, reading the transcript from a recent healthcare conference over at JP Morgan and your presentation, when it went to oncology, I found it depressing, Emma. Depressing how neglected that area of healthcare has been over the last two, three years. Just fixing yeah, that, point. Emma, as Omicron fades, how much of a tailwind is that going to be for you? Well, uh, oncology is one of the areas of specialty medicine that GSK has reinvested in. Remember, one of the most stra important strategic shifts we've been driving is towards vaccines and specialty medicines. GSK got out of oncology completely. And then uh, over the last four years, with new talent, uh, uh, some business development moves and uh, homegrown assets as well, we've shown really good growth in oncology and an exciting emerging pipeline uh, too. The tragedy has been over the last Last two years, as you say, actually diagnosis and surgery rates are down a lot. I think in ovarian cancer, I'll give you that example, where we have a tremendous uh, medicine for women facing into a really difficult cancer. Diagnosis and surgery rates are down 20%. So we're all hoping that as uh, the pandemic moves into an endemic stage, we're going to see further growth uh, fueled uh, through through that and mainly, you know, real impact for patients. Well, we hope we can fix some of that because that needs to happen soon and quickly. Yeah. Emma, you mentioned spinning off the business, splitting in two. Let's talk about how you're going to do that. You've got a plan. You've had a plan. Unilever's got other plans. Have you spoken well, to the CEO about their bid? Well, Have you spoken directly well. with him? We've been very clear and very public since the news on this emerged uh, in our uh, press release statements that obviously GSK's priority, in fact, since we announced the deal with Pfizer several years ago and our intent to demerge, our priority has always been about creating shareholder value. So when these uh, unsolicited offers came in, obviously the board uh, took its responsibilities to review them very seriously, very seriously. And after that, we did uh, reject them unanimously alongside our joint venture partners as well, just for fundamentally undervaluing what we've built in this pure play consumer business and particularly its future prospects for growth. We've had uh, a lot of support, uh, and some of it very public, from our shareholders, who we listen to and talk to a lot, about continuing with the plan forward yeah. in terms of a merger that's in a matter of months. And we have a great capital markets day coming up on the 28th of February, when we're bring, going to bring a lot more visibility to the above market growth prospects for this business, its sustainable margin expansion, great cash generation, and the truly unique portfolio and great management team. Well, maybe Alan has other plans for the end of the month. Maybe he has other plans to come back. Is he aware of what your Price is. 
I don't expect you to negotiate with me right now, but does he know what your price is? We've been extremely clear that our priority is shareholder value uh, creation. We've never disclosed any kind of price. Our focus is on making sure that uh, we, you know, prioritize uh, our shareholders, that we uh, unlock the balance sheet for GSK, and yep. absent uh, a better offer than the, pr the plan we're working on for the demerger, we're going to stay very focused on executing that success. You know what Elliott Management thinks? This is what they put out in a letter last year. Going to allow you to respond to that, Emma, in just a moment. This was the quote from last July. This is a firm with, quote, a poor record of operational execution and value creation, leading to skepticism about the company's future and underappreciation of its true potential. For some people, Emma, you are a CEO under pressure at the moment. It's almost five years at the top, five years which have delivered negative returns for the stock. How are you going to keep people like Elliott Management happy? Well, we are very focused on listening and uh, to our shareholders and talking to them. I was brought in to address perennial underperformance uh, for this company. And over the last few, four years, we've been addressing in a comprehensive way a wholesale transformation of reprioritizing investment in R&D and strengthening the pipeline. That we've definitely seen now with 22 assets in our pipeline in pivotal stage readouts. We have be completely uh, reset uh, the group's structure with this path forward into separation into two new companies and most importantly we're going to see all of that translating into meaningful growth and we're incredibly excited that the year, this year is going to be the first year of that delivery of more than five uh, than uh, five percent top line growth and more than double digit bottom line bottom line growth whilst allowing for continued investment in and prioritizing of the pipeline uh, with a great leadership team that's completely committed to delivery for that so Emma, we're relishing this work I look forward to seeing that step up performance materialize and catching up with you soon.